Hello, I'm Janice Berkebile. I'm here today to share with you my Riveted Amulets class. This is an intermediate wire working class, but if you haven't had any metal working experience, that's okay. Today we're going to frame a focal bead by creating our own caps, our bale, and then riveting the entire piece together. Come join me, it'll be fun. Here are two samples of the piece we're going to make today. Uh, this, they're using a simple pebble with a 14 gauge hole, a caps, a bale, and the rivet. Uh, but there are other things to do with, the, with this, and there are other ticks, tips and tricks that I need to impart to you. Um, here is another one just using a lamp work bead. This one here and this one both used a double cap to get some contrasting metals going on. This one over here we can use crystals, um, but this crystal in particular had a larger hole and so what I'm trying to show you inside there is that there is a coil of wire. If, you're, if you want to um, capture one of these beads that has a larger hole, you'll have to fill the hole or the rivet will not work. So what I did was estimate how much what gauge of wire to coil around the 14 gauge and then set it in there so when I um, put these on the head pin there's the head pin, the bail, the cap, the coil, the bead, the other cap, and the other end of the bail. But that needs to fill this. Also the other thing is about uh, this type of bead, it's transparent. If you were to dip this in liver of sulfur at this point, it would travel through and create a dark line through there, which I don't think is attractive. So what you would want to do is dip all your pieces, perhaps the head of the ball pin, uh, but not the coil, and not the wire going through, but the rest of it, and then shine it up before you assemble. The next trick is this double bale. So you would form the bales the same way as, as the first bale. But what's going to happen here, if you want to dangle a charm down below, is you will form one of the paddles, slide the charm on, because if you form the second paddle, as I've done many times, it will not fit on and you'll start all over. So form one paddle, slide the charm on. It, you have to work around it It's because it's going to be there. And then form the second paddle. Let's see so you can see that second side there. But the double bale is one of my favorite pieces. Today we got to choose our focal bead and here I have some various stones, a lampwork bead, and a pebble. What you want to do is choose the size of the cap to go with the bead that you've chosen. This cap right here is a one inch cap made using the disc cutter. These two are the three quarters of an inch cap and then these two are the three eighths inch cap. What you want to do is make sure that the cap goes up kind of on the side of the bead but doesn't cover the entire bead. And they vary in how much they've been dapped. This one is much more shallow and this one has been dapped a little bit more to give it a nice curve. Let me just show you again with this large bead, the width of the bead, and the relationship to the cap that's going to go on to it. You can see how far that's been dapped. And then this also works on round beads, where these are mostly rondelles here. Here's a round lampwork bead. And we have to remember that the driving force is a 14 gauge hole. And then right here, a pebble drilled with a 14 gauge hole and the cap that's going to go on either side. This is a disc cutter. It has 11 different sizes of discs that you can cut. I use it in conjunction with a one pound brass mallet and cut lube. 
The pliers you'll need today are a pair of chain nose pliers, a 1.80 millimeter hole punch plier, a small wrap and tap, and then a cutter. And for me, I need to use the uh, heavy gauge Fat Daddy cutter. Today we'll be using a steel block to support the metal, a pounding pad to support the block and deaden the noise. We have some design stamps, some asterisks and spirals. We have a salon board, a frets chasing hammer, a large embossing, and a riveting hammer. Now we're going to be using a dapping block in conjunction with dapping punches and a riveting stake. The materials you're going to need today start with a focal bead that has a 14 gauge hole, a piece of metal that's 24 gauge, copper or sterling is appropriate, or you can use blanks of varying sizes. Then you'll need a length of 12 gauge wire and I will discuss the variances in the lengths a little bit later. You'll also need a fine silver head pin made of 14 gauge. I choose this precision disc cutter because it has 11 sizes of cutters. Each one corresponds with one of these holes. This is the half inch one. And when you go to cut, take it and just rub a little bit of the cut lube on and then place it down through the hole and spin it. Now you notice I already have my metal in there. I want to make sure to double check and see that I've got my entire piece uh, opening cut uh, open there to make sure that I get an entire disc. Then I'm going to take the one pound brass mallet and two or three very strong strokes and I should have a disc. This wants to go all the way through. Oh, and look at that, it's stuck to it. Yeah. There we are, we've got a disc. And we'll need two for this project, so I'm just gonna make one more. And you don't need to really lube it up again, but it will lengthen the life of these. And when you get your disc cutter, it is my opinion that you do not need to share it with people when you take it to class. They are a little bit delicate. The single most important thing that you need to know is that this steel part right here is the cutter and does never get put into the hole like this. Uh, you need to make sure that the cutter part there, you can tell it's got a slight angle right there coming down. Let's see if we can see that. There we go little bit of an angle there, uh, but this is the cutter side, so always pay due diligence to that. So when you place it in there, give it a little spin so that you know it's resting before you strike it with the hammer. To help you choose what size of disc to cut, you can pick up your focal bead and take the disc cutters and see how it's going to look there. It's going to end up a little bit smaller, but for this bead, the half inch one looks really nice. The next step is to texture the discs with the design stamps. And you can see here, this is what we're going for, two of the um, domes that are already completed. What I like to do with the design stamps is create a border around the outside. When I do that, the design stamp is positioned sometimes uh, on the metal and sometimes partway off of the metal. But when I do the stamping, I wanna make sure that any part of the stamp that is on the metal gets uh, a good firm stamp. So here we go. Take those off of there. I'm gonna defer to my spirals today. Those are always a good, a good look. We want to place the design stamp vertically and with the uh, brass mallet. Ground yourself by putting the mallet on the back of the stamp and then lifting, you get one strike. Make it a good one. Thank you. 
When, uh, I, when I look at this, I want to see if there's any little holes going around. So sometimes I could fill it in with the tiny spiral. But the, this one's a pretty tiny disc, so I'm just going to go straight to my asterisk, which is another all-time favorite, and fill in the center. I like these because you rarely miss. And then I'm going to take the period stamp and create a few little dots. You know, I can't just leave it alone. Now one more. And there you go. So get a couple of those prepared like that. Then I'm going to tap around the edge of the metal. I'm going to use my pounding pad, place my block on the pounding pad, and I'm going to use the large embossing hammer and just go around the edges very gently. This helps a little bit to uh, finish off that border and to smooth out the edges. And what's left we'll take care of with the salon board. And finish off by filing or smoothing off the edges of the metal with the salon board. Alright, get two of those ready and we'll go on to the next step, which is punching the hole. Now, I'm not a very big measurer, but this, in this case, I really do want to measure. I want to get it in, in the center as best I possibly can. So I'm going to mark a hole in the center using my Sharpie. Now I did, I did stamp in the center there, um, but I wanted to do the stamping first because if you punch the hole first, then you, uh, you change where you're going to do the stamping. So I just do the stamping wherever I want, and then I'll come in and punch the hole. And again, this is the 1.80 millimeter hole punch plier. When you try to take the discs off of the hole punch, it gets stuck a little bit, and instead of slicing my fingers, I like to place a small piece of leather around the disc so that I can wiggle it off of the plier. You can see that I have the holes punched here. Now we're going to dap the pieces, but I want to talk a little bit about punching holes and dapping the pieces and the order in which you do that. For um, these caps, the holes are in the center, and when you dap, it's going to be okay. But if you were to punch a hole on the side of this cap, it would stretch the metal into a teardrop shape and distort the, the shape of the hole. So you want to think about what order you're punching holes in metal and dapping. When you dap, you want to go uh, in steps. You, want, you don't want to go straight from flat to a severe dome. So I've got one of my little guys in here all ready to go. Uh, what you want to do is find the punch that fills the hole completely. That fits just right in that well. In this goes, now you want to think about your design. My design for these caps must face down. If you, you know, sometimes you may want it up, but for today we want it facing down, and you want it as horizontal as possible in the well. Then I'm going to place the punch in vertically, and with the one pound brass mallet, I'm going to give it a pretty good strike, not, not too wimpy. I'm, I'm serious about this, so, and here we have a real, relatively low dome here. Then we will find the next spot on this sphere. I think I'm going to go, let's see, choose your punch and then find the well that it fits in and position it 
like before and so it's coming along it's got a little more let's see that it's got a little more sphere there but still we want to take it one more step maybe and and what you should be doing is checking it along with your focal bead and seeing how it relates to the focal bead and what you like but I like a little more uh, of the curves in there let's see if that fits in here and nice Repeat with the second disc for the other side. Now we're going to make the bail for our riveted amulet. As you can see here, we have two different styles of bail. This one is a simple bail that takes about three to four inches of 12 gauge wire. This one would take about six inches of 12 gauge wire, and it's for a different uh, size of bead, a different form of bead. So we're going to go over how the, the order in which you would make these, and here we are. The first thing you'll need to do to create this bale for the simple bale. You'll want your pounding pad, you will want uh, your chasing hammer. First, the first thing you need to do is make sure that these ends are flush cut. So I'm using the Fat Daddy cutters. And remember not to let any pieces fly away. So both ends are now flush cut. Then what you want to do is create a paddle on the very end of your wire here. I'm going to focus on the center of this chasing hammer, it's the frets chasing hammer, and the very end of this wire so that this paddle forms into a nice round paddle. And there we have a paddle. We're going to file this off a little bit. There's a little bit of raggedy, raggedy edge there. And let's see if we can see that. We will file that up so it'll be good to go. And then I need to make the paddle on the second side of that wire. Okay, here we are, both sides, the paddle is made. The next step is to take the 1.80 millimeter hole punch and punch a hole in each of these paddles. The reason I'm using this hole punch is because it allows 14 gauge to pass through it with a tiny bit of wiggle room. I'm going to place it in the center centerish it being a loose little term and pop both those holes there we go the next thing to do would be to file the edges until they are smooth to the touch with the salon board all right the next part of forming this bale is using the small wrap and tap. When I use the small wrap and tap, it has a flat edge right on in here, and I'm going to have that facing away from me. I'll place the center of the wire. I visually place the center of the wire right in here, and then I'm going to start forming it on one side bringing it around and around. Now you can see that it's off um, sides. So I'm going to move it down a little bit so that I can get those two 
sides to come together. Open that back up and there we go. Get that down there. So you want that want them to end up pretty close to right across from each other. And don't worry, the forming is just begun. We've got to get this entire piece formed before we can rivet it together. To continue forming the bale, you want to first assemble your piece. And you can see here that I have threaded on to the, uh, what's going to be your rivet, this 14 gauge bald head pin. Uh, if you need to know how to make bald head pins, refer to Chris Silva's uh, head, bald head pin making class on beeducation.com. Now we're gonna, you can see that we've threaded this on to the head pin. First comes the one side of the bale, then a cap, then your focal bead, then the second cap, and then the other side of the bale. The reason we put this on here is because we want this to be specially formed to the focal bead. Uh, I'm going to use my long round nose pliers. It's a little weird application of a tool, but this is how I get this to form around here. The, why I use them is because they have such a long nose. So I'm going to take this and pinch this down so it kind of forms around that focal bead. There we go. And now I want you to notice here how these, um, the ends or the paddles of this the bale are uh, flaring out, and that's just not good form. We need them to be cupping the bale rather like this one. So we're going to work on our form a little bit more, and all of the forming for the bale has to be complete before we rivet. Riveting is the very last move. Okay, so I'm going to disassemble my piece now. The next step for this is to flatten out the top of the bale to give you a little bit of surface area. I like to add some design stamps in, so I want a little bit more area in there. So at the top of the bale, I've got some interesting designs with using the asterisk and the period stamp. Then I'm going to uh, form the bottom paddles so that they can form to the domes. All right. We're going to start with the chasing hammer. It's the domed side. Anytime you're using a hammer to pound the metal, you can see how it moves the metal. So I'm just going to move it back into position a little bit, but that gives me a nice surface area in which to stamp. And for me on these bales, it doesn't matter so much that the entire stamp gets on there, um, but I do use the asterisk and it's a little bit forgiving in that regard. And I'm going to take the uh, one pound brass mallet and And I like to use dots a lot, so I'm going to give myself three dots down the side. Now these dots, it's kind of precarious, so you just have to hold on as best you can. And I need a couple more dots up here. And I'm going to give it just a couple more of the tiny asterisks. And one for the road. The next step is to form the paddles of the bale. So I'm going to take these chain nose pliers and just gently with baby steps Curl, curve that paddle in a little bit so it's not flaring out. All right, so you can see how it wants to curve around those domes. Before we put the piece back together, we need to texture the head pin. Right here I have a hex anvil, 
and uh, this is a pretty cool tool. What happens here is there's a series of holes and these are conical shaped holes so you'll want to use it from the small side otherwise if you put wire down through the hole it'll get stuck. The small side you can see is indicated by these striations here and what you want to do is take the head pin and fit it down through the smallest hole possible that that wire will comfortably fit down. Now, as you can see, there's extra wire on the back poking out, so we will use the bench block to support that wire. All right, so now to begin the texturing. What you don't want to do is force that head pin all the way down through that hole. You want to just gently texture the top of it, and I like to use the uh, Precision Smith large embossing hammer. I'm gonna take that and just tap the top of the bald head pin. And so you can see that this hex anvil is supporting the, the stock of this head pin stem. So gently, gently, not you don't want this flat. I like it, I like it to be kind of a rounded square, if you will. And then I'm going to take my favorite, my my usual asterisk stamp. And because the hex anvil's on the edge of the block, I'm going to have to hold on to that a little bit uh, to support it and keep that in position. And with the mallet. And now we have an asterisk on the top of our head pin. There we go. Then we're going to reassemble this piece and see how it looks from here. Okay, so the head pin wants to travel through. I'm going to open that up a little bit. It gets a little uh, cumbersome in here. Oh, look at that. We need to take that focal bead out and put the cap on so that it's in the proper order. In you go, mister. Cap on the next side. And then the bail. Alright, so let's see how this is fitting. It's a little bit loose here, so I'm going to take my chain nose again oh, to draw this together. Hold on. Hold on tight. Hold on for the ride here. Bring that together, and that looks like it's fitting pretty well. What you don't want to have is airspace in between any of these parts. You want it to be a nice, tight, snug fit. Everything has to fit before the riveting. Okay, now that we have all of our parts made, we reassemble it so that we can rivet it. But first you can see that these paddles still aren't quite conforming to the dome there. So I'm just going to take the back of my chain nose and burnish it down so that it uh, conforms to the shape of that dome. All right, so now we're ready for the rivet. To get set up for the rivet, I'm going to place the uh, riveting stake here. And I want to find the hole that matches kind of close to this. You can see that this isn't going in yet. And this one goes in, but it goes, it allows the metal to go travel down through there. So what I'm going to do is place a piece of leather over the top so that when we go to rivet, the, the ball will be protected and it will be allowed to lower into the stake. All right, so now, because I took it apart, I'll have to reassemble. Cap and then cap. Get it through so now you can see the point of having everything be uh, have a 14 gauge hole. It all travels right through there. Okay, now we're going to get ready and poised. When you are, what I want you to do is find that 
big hole there to allow that bald and to uh, lower down in there. Hold your piece with the um, shaft of that rivet vertical. Have your um, riveting hammer and your cutter poised. When you cut this, uh, I'm going to use the Fat Daddy cutter, but you need to be able to see your piece. And I want a good one and a half uh, millimeters. I want a good length, but not too much of that wire left over to create that rivet. So let's see if we can get that in there. There you go. You want to have a, a lot of surface area that you can uh, hammer down to create a nail head on the back. All right, so I'm going to place, so this would be the uh, rivet head and the wire traveling through the piece would be considered the shaft and now I'm going to create a nail head that's the, of the, from the tail of that. This is the Fretz riveting hammer. I'm going to start with the uh, slender pointed side and then finish off with the uh, other side. So right there is the slender side. When I rivet, I'm going to start by kind of envisioning traveling around the outer edge of that um, that wire, which is not a very large space. So I'm just going to take it, and when you rivet, it's it's a very gentle process, tap, 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 um, not at all aggressive. So I'm going to start. And this takes baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And if you look closely, you can see that it's starting to spread the metal ever so slowly. And that's the idea. We don't want to just do it all in one fell swoop. up close. What you want to make sure that's um, not happening is that the wire is not bending to the side. It will um, become an insecure rivet or it won't be secure. Um, so I'm going to kind of tip it back just a little bit so that it's straight up. And after you've gotten a little bit of that nail head formed, then take the second side of the hammer and then you can start spreading the meat of that uh, nail head. You can be a little bit more aggressive at this point. So when you think it's ready, you want to uh, feel it with your thumb. It should not have any snags. It should be very smooth to the touch. So I feel a tiny bit of a snag there. I want to check the front and make sure that it is still in alignment and that looks pretty good. And so I'm going to place that back in my little hole there. And just go kind of form it around like here because it's not a flat surface. So I want to get rid of one of those little snags. And there's still a little bit of a snag. Ah, there we are. That's what I'm looking for. All right, there's the front and the back. 
Okay, so here we have a piece that I'd previously made. This one had already been dipped in liver of sulfur, so you can see the texture showing up quite nicely. And even here on the bale, you get to see the design there. Let's see, there we are. And on the back, oh yes, smooth to the touch. Excellent. And this one, it'll get dipped in liver of sulfur a little bit later. The reason we want to make every all the parts of the bale formed before we rivet is because this piece I had riveted and it was successful, and then I wanted to take the metal and and twist it to give it a different juxtaposition. And what happened was it tore the ba the uh, bale away from the dome here, and it could pop the rivet. It just happens to be a pretty good rivet, so it's a really good. Uh, example of what not to do. Okay, here's a different style of bale. This bale is good to accommodate a bead that is longer, so it opens up a little wider so that uh, it can come right around that bead. To start this bead, you don't want to do the paddles first thing. You want to start up here at the, at the top. So I'm going to use my small wrap and tap on the third tier and try and center that wire. The reason we started at the top here is so that uh, it can get centered. If you do the paddles first and then you twist it, they never end up at the same place. So here we are, we're going to bend this around, trying to keep that in the center. and bring this to a full loop here. Now this tool is going to provide me leverage, so I'm going to take this and with the top part of this wire, twist that away and bring that bottom part over the top. There we go, there we go, and so you can see that these two ends, if I'd made paddles, then I'd have to cut it and start over and all that. So um, then to form this further, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to use my chain nose plier towards the end and in baby steps give it a little bit of curve here because this straight line is no good for me. And let's look at our piece here. It's a little leaning to the right, so I'll go in here with the chain nose and give it a little lean to the left to balance it out again. At this point, I will take the, um, the chasing hammer and spread the metal up here. One of the first rules in pounding is not to hammer directly over where wires cross but you can get away with it in just a little bit. Uh, you don't want to weaken those wires, but it gives a nice uh, little texture there. So then I would form the paddles. You have to spread this out a little bit to form the paddles here, um, but then form your paddles and then go in and do your texturing so that you can get a piece that looks like this. Thanks for coming to my Riveted Amulets class today. It's been great fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any feedback for me, just shoot us an email here at bgcation.com. Mm -hmm.